I'm not gonna lie, stats is not my favorite subject, but there are concepts and mathematical objects and theorems that come up in statistics that I find really interesting. One such object that's a little bit more accessible is the normal distribution, which is one of the most well-known distributions from statistics. Algebraically, here is the equation for a normal curve. I know it looks intense, but the shape you get out is essentially just a very sad or very dangerous roller coaster. You just have to take your pick at parameters. Encoded into that mess of an equation is both the mean, which is the position of the peak here, and the variance, which is the measure of how spread out the graph is. In a more experimental sense, the variance gives us an idea of how much of a disparity there is between any two points in our sample. One pretty cool example that is pretty simple to pull off lets us generate a normal curve with a snack of your choice. More precisely, we can get an approximately normal distribution if you take some small snack-sized dry food, I'll be using Cheerios, and then pour them out over a single location from a relatively low height. If you do this too high, you're gonna make a huge mess. Once you're done, if you look at the side, you can see that the average Cheerio landed about here, which is around the same position I was aiming for while pouring. The variance or the spread of the Cheerios would depend on how high you decide to pour it. And that makes sense, as the higher you pour the Cheerios, the more energy they'll have when they hit the ground, and the more they will bounce away, possibly, from the center of which you're pouring. From a more statistical realm of thinking, each of the Cheerios was a piece of data in our sample. The initial pour gives us a three-dimensional, approximately normal distribution, but for simplicity, I'll avoid describing most of the details in the three-dimensional case as it requires a bit more understanding of the two-dimensional case, which is the focus of this video. We get to a two-dimensional example by looking at the three-dimensional one from the side, which is what we did with the Cheerios. Mathematically, we're projecting the three-dimensional distribution onto a plane, which generates the two-dimensional version of the distribution. The normal curve is fairly well understood and it comes up all over the place. One thing that makes these curves easier to work with is that every normal curve can be translated and scaled to have a mean of zero and a variance of one. Now, you might be thinking that sounds like a bit of data manipulation, but actually the transformations are reversible. So if we go ahead and transform a normal curve into the standard normal, we can always go back to the normal that we had. So if we know things about our data when it looks like the standard normal, we can take that information and pull it back to the curve when we have our actual data there. So the process of getting to the standard normal is called standardizing a normal distribution. Uh, here is some intuition for how that works. Looking at the equation, we have two components that use the variance, and one that uses the mean. What's nice about the mean is that it's already in a translation position. So if we want our new mean to be zero, whatever translation we apply needs to be some expression of our new variable plus mu. Now for the variance, we're not going to be able to directly affect the sigma in the denominator here yet but we can go ahead and get rid of the one here in the exponent just by multiplying our new variable by sigma. Plugging this in, we get this expression, which essentially standardizes the normal distribution. You might be wondering, what about the sigma in the front, in the denominator, that we weren't able to touch? To get rid of that, we have to talk about some integration. Don't worry, it's not going to be super calculus intensive. Normal distributions and distributions in general are really nice from a calculus perspective because the integral of the area under the curve from negative infinity to positive infinity or the domain of the distribution in other cases is just one. And the standard normal has a well-known value for the area of certain sections of the curve, which makes standardization more appealing, which is why it's important to be able to go back and forth between the standard normal and whatever normally distributed data that you have found. This property is something that comes out of the definition of what it means to be a statistical distribution, but I'm not gonna get into the why we choose it to be that way kind of ish. But when we go ahead and take a look at what we're doing when we're standardizing our normal distribution, from a high level, we're also scaling what it means to be a unit on one of our axes, the x-axis in this case. And in integration, that information is reflected in the differential, which is this dx thing here that no one ever really explains fully. At least in my mathematical career, no one has really fully explained it to me. It's been all intuitively put down in front of me. 
So that's what I'm gonna do here. When we want to figure out how differentials compare when switching variables, we differentiate both sides to find that a differential in x is sigma times the differential in z. Thus, when we substitute the value of dx into the integral of our translated and scaled normal curve, we get an integral with an integrand identical to the standard normal distribution. And this is what finishes the standardization of the distribution. Again, the thing that makes this really cool is getting into a position where you're working with the standard distribution allows for quick calculation of probabilities that then can be translated back into the viewpoint of your original data without doing much calculation with the original data itself. But probability, on the other hand, is a whole nother animal. So that's all I'm going to get through with the standard normal distribution right now. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this video. I have, I guess I've been making math videos each week since I started up again, which has been great. So maybe there'll be another one next week. Uh, if you enjoyed this video though, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos um, and maybe some more stats videos. I don't know. This was not super statsy. It was just me talking about a math object that comes up in stats. Anyway, uh, aside from that, I am Nathan, this is Chuck, and I will see you next time.